What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Still here in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 43. And here in Isaiah 43, we're going to get more of a look at God and who God is and and how he chose Israel and delivers his people. And before we get started, uh, I'm going to go ahead and preach the gospel. Everybody's going to stand before God for judgment one day. And anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire. Along with anybody, uh, whether before or after coming to faith, who is living a sinful lifestyle. Uh, an unrepentant sinful lifestyle. And... Uh, God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life and in order to be with him in his kingdom. God is holy, perfect, and righteous, and that's how he has his His kingdom. And there's not going to be any type of unrighteousness, any type of sin in his kingdom. And uh, he requires perfection. None of us can earn that. None of us can earn a spot in his kingdom. None of us, none of us can justify ourselves before God. None of us are perfect. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, lived a perfect life. He faced temptations like us. Jesus, the Son, God the Son, the Son of God. There's a Father and there's a Son. Jesus was born as a human, faced temptations like us, but lived a perfect life. Perfect life. And although he was perfect and didn't deserve any type of punishment, he didn't deserve to die. That death that we deserve in the lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on the cross. So that through him, that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Our sins are taken away from us and we receive his perfection, his righteousness. It's only through faith in Jesus and what he did that we can be made right with God. We can't earn it. It's through faith. And I just went through, I just did uh, Jeremiah 31 today. If you haven't seen that, check it out uh, about the new covenant. Repent and believe the gospel. The word repent means to have a change of heart or a change of mind. Most of the time we see repent in the Bible, it means to turn from your sins, turn from your wickedness, and turn to God. Follow him. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later, and you call out to him to forgive you, to save you, and you truly mean it, he will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit, which changes your heart and leads you to follow him. The Holy Spirit uh, also gives you wisdom, discernment, and understanding in many things. He will forgive you, he will give you the Holy Spirit, and he will give you eternal life. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus Christ today. There's not much time left. Now let's get into Isaiah 43. But now, thus says Yahuwah, your creator, O Jacob. Jacob is Israel. And he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. Hallelujah. I have called you by my by name. You are mine. Hallelujah. God chose us. And anybody watching this, most likely, maybe not everybody watching this, but God chose most of us and called us to himself. And You know, it's really uh, amazing to think God chose us, you know. So we don't deserve it. But now, thus says Yahuwah, your creator, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. And we know water represents people and nations as well. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. 
For I am Yahuwah, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I have given Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in your place. And Seba was uh, in Edom. Since you are precious in my sight, since you are honored and I love you, I will give other men in your place and other peoples in exchange for your life. God protects his people and saves his people. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, and whom I have created for my glory, whom I have formed, even whom I have made. God formed us, God made us. God chose us to follow Him, to be in a relationship with Him. Bring out the people who are blind, even though they have eyes, and the deaf, even though they have ears. And, uh, you know, the, the Bible says, and it's even prophesied here in Isaiah that, uh, he would cause his people to have blindness and not physical blindness and, and deafness, but uh, to his word, to be able to understand his truth. Right now, many of the Jews are blinded to the truth of Yeshua. And um, and one day, eyes are going to be opened. Not only physically and ears open physically, but people who didn't have eyes to see and ears to hear to be able to understand the truth of God and the truth of his word and the truth of Yeshua and Jesus are going to be able to see and hear and understand. All the nations have gathered together so that the peoples may be assembled. Who among this who among them can declare this and proclaim to us the former things? Let them present their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say, it is true. You are my witnesses, declares Yahuwah, and my servant whom I have chosen. So that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed. And there will be none after me. I, even I, am Yahuwah. And there is no savior besides me. And this is speaking about the Father and the Son. I don't believe they're the same uh, person, same individual. Same being, but it, I guess a different depends on how you define being because we're all human beings but we're all individual people just like the father and son are both God but they're not the same individual not the same person and the nations uh, this is what we saw in the last chapter or two it says, all the nations have been gathered together so that the peoples may be assembled. Who among them can declare this and proclaim to us the former things? Let them present their witnesses that they may be justified. Saying, um, when God was talking about, um, it's, it's me who declares this stuff. It's me who makes this stuff known. It's me who gives understanding. Like, who... Who are these others? Who 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 else is God? Who are who what who are these other gods that, that y'all think you're getting knowledge from? Uh, 
But he said to Israel, You are my witnesses, declares Yahuwah, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, and after me there will be and there will be none after me. I, even I, am Yahuwah. They both have the same name. But I don't think they're the same individual, the same person. There is one God. And I don't think it's the Father and not the Son. I believe he's speaking about both of them. But I don't necessarily believe in a trinity the way some people do. I, even I, am Yahuwah. And there is no Savior besides me. And both the Father and the Son are mentioned as a Savior. It is I who have declared and saved and proclaimed. And there was no strange God among you. So you are my witnesses, declares Yahuwah. And I am God. Even from eternity I am He. And there is none who can deliver out of my hand. I act. And who can reverse it? Hallelujah. Thus says Yahuwah, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake, I have sent to Babylon and will bring them all down as fugitives, even the Chaldeans, into the ships in which they rejoice. And uh, we know that um, Israel or Judah was in a Babylonian captivity was held captive by Babylon and uh, we know some of these surrounding chapters are speak about Cyrus and how God was going to send Cyrus and called him by name called him chose him beforehand to restore Jerusalem and rebuild the temple or at least to be a part of that and Although he wasn't the, he wasn't the one, he wasn't reigning as king when the Persians took over the ba the Babylon. But we know that uh, after after Babylon, the Persians took over Medo Persia, and we read about this in the Book of Daniel in multiple places. Thus says Yahuwah, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I have sent to Babylon. And will bring them all down as fugitives, even the Chaldeans, into ships, into the ships in which they rejoice. I am Yahuwah, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Hallelujah. Thus says Yahuwah, who makes a way through the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the mighty man. They will lie down together and not rise again. They have been quenched and extinguished like a wick. It's God who delivers. Referring to um, coming out of Egypt. But also, you know, he's going to, this is going to happen again. I mean, waters, like I said, represent people or nations who makes a way through the through the sea and a path through the mighty waters who brings forth the chariot and the horse the army and the mighty man they will lie down together and not rise again they have been quenched and extinguished like a wick and this is what's going to happen to his enemies here in the last days as well do not call to mind the former things or ponder things of the past behold I will do something new now, if it will spring forth, will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. And um, we know this roadway, um, the highway, we see it mentioned in a, in a few other scriptures. And it seems to be speaking about, um, like I said the other day, uh, the, the highway to heaven, basically. And how do we, and how do we get to His kingdom through through righteousness, through following Him? But I mean, truly through Jesus only, 
is uh that's the only way to get to his kingdom but uh the path of the upright is uh to to depart from evil we read in proverbs and uh meaning to follow him to keep his commandments and to depart from evil I will make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. Because we know the during the tribulation time, it's going to be turned, the whole world, I mean, but especially the land of Israel is going to be turned into a wilderness, into a desert. And, um, and he says he's going to fill it with water, which water represents people but also represents his word and his spirit. And and we know he's going to restore the land. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. It's going to be restored. And as far as the roadway, uh, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe there will be an actually actual roadway to the kingdom. And uh, I believe there likely will be. But uh, I, I, know, I believe some of these scriptures... Not necessarily this one, but a lot of the scriptures refer to just righteousness. Walking righteously is the path, path to his kingdom, is the roadway, the highway. Behold, I will do something new. Now will it was now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers and the desert. The beasts of the field will glorify me. And speaking about the millennial reign, the beasts of the field will glorify me. And uh, I spoke about in the last chapter of Jeremiah. And I wonder if uh, during the millennial reign in his kingdom, because there's going to be animals and people in his kingdom, I wonder if uh, the animals are going to be able to speak. You know, who knows? And we read here, the beasts of the field will glorify me. The jackals and the ostriches. Because I have given waters in the wilderness... And rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people. And uh, we know his his word is true food and true drink. His word, his spirit. The people whom I formed. For myself will declare my praise. Hallelujah. Yet you have not called on me, O Jacob. But you have become weary of me, O Israel. We need to call upon him. We need to follow him and serve him with all our heart. Yet you have not called on me, O Jacob. But you have become weary of me, O Israel. You have not brought, you have not brought to me the sheep of your burnt offerings. Nor have you honored me with your sacrifices. I have not burdened you with offerings, nor wearied you, wearied you with incense. You have brought me, you have bought me not sweet cane with money, nor have you filled me with the fat of your sacrifices. Rather, you have burdened me with your sins. You have wearied me with your iniquities. And. This is uh, what his people, and even us these days, although it needs to not be, his people have grieved him the whole time by not following him, not seeking him and serving him and truly following him with all our heart. That's what we need to do. Rather you have burdened me, burdened me with your sins, you have wearied me with your iniquities. I, even I, am the one who wipes out your transgressions for my own sake. Hallelujah. For his sake. And I will not remember your sins. Hallelujah. Put me in remembrance. Let us argue our case together. State your cause that you may be proved right. For your first fourth, for, for first or your, your first forefather sinned, speaking about Adam. And your spokesmen, or the footnote says interpreters. And let me just, uh, let me pull it up in the, in, 
Let me pull this verse up. Give me one second. Let's see. One second. It says your first father sinned, speaking about Adam, and your mediators. Let me see what this word is. It's a Hebrew word. Lutz. Uh, ambassador, interpreter, having derision, mocker. Uh, primitive root properly to make mouths. To scoff. Gonna be ambassador or interpreter. Scornful. Ambassador, I guess. Uh, let's go back to the scripture. For your, for for your first for your first forefather sinned. And your spokesmen or ambassadors have transgressed against me. Maybe speaking about the priests. So I will so I will pollute the princes of the sanctuary. Then the word there for pollute can also mean pierce through the princes of the sanctuary. And I will consign Jacob to the ban and Israel to revilement. Because we screw up because we don't follow him with all our heart. Not, I'm not saying any any anybody individually, but as a whole, the body of Christ and His people since way back then have uh, have had an issue with following Him, with keeping His commandments, with walking in His ways, and this is what He wants from us. This is how we're obedient. And we, I mean, if you have children, you want children to be obedient to you that you want them to listen to you and follow you and 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 grow up to be uh good people but uh we as children of god don't aren't always like that we need to be obedient to god we need to follow him with all our heart and serve him with all our heart this is what kept uh israel out of the land the whole time what kept God's hand, his judgment coming down upon his people the whole time. But God is merciful. God forgives us. And God will deliver us and bring us into his kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Praise his holy name. Let's keep all his commandments to serve him with all our heart. Let's uh, do his will in everything. Jesus said, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect, and we need to strive for that. We need to serve him as, as, best, as, as best as we can. So uh, let's serve him, let's walk in all his ways and do his will in all things. Thank you guys for tuning in. I preached the gospel in the beginning. If you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ yet, Turn to him. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Repent and believe the gospel. There's not much time left. Thank you guys for tuning in. That's the end of Isaiah 43. Love y'all. Shalom.